Another twist has been introduced into the field between the Edo State Governor, Governor Godwin Obaseki, and his deputy, Philip Schreiber. The embattled deputy governor has officially resumed at his new office outside the government house in Benin City. This followed a memo to that effect by the permanent secretary in the office of the head of service to the permanent secretary in the deputy governor's office. As you call, this is ridiculous. Governor Basek is such a petty governor. I'm sorry to say that. Do, do, do. Are you, are you, are you, oh, damn. <laughs> yeah, are you, I don't. <laughs> Philip Shabu has gone to court. He has withdrawn, you know, but I thought he was going to, the governor was saying, going to, you know, forgive and let, you know, everything go. That's, you know, that's, that's in, uh, that office, this, that office. This is the new office because we got visuals of the of the new office, you know. He has packed everything from the from the government house itself. And they now moved him to this place that used to be the procurement, um, uh, the public procurement um, office, you know, that was built by Ad Ad Adam Oshomole in 2014. So he moved him here. Uh, so the deputy governor, if you want to meet him now, you go to number uh, seven, then it's Osadebea Avenue. So that is where he is now. So it won't so have any, I want to believe that the deputy government governor... No, 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 no. It's going to touch this place. I don't know if the governor will give him small money to touch this place. Because with the way it's looking, it's not looking befitting at all. But what happened to that, uh, that cordial relationship? What happened to that five and six? You know, the and thing is, Philip Shribu is known to be a very, very active, active deputy governor. Yeah, this is you, you, you see him you represent the governor everywhere. There are two things in life. Was given the latitude. Yeah, exactly. But at what point in time? This is did in things degenerate to this level. Ayo, in twenty twenty, they had a very, very wonderful and unbreakable relationship, whereby even Shribu had to, as Yoruba would say, uje ujue, uju. Uh, or rare, or Babae, which is uh, Adams or Shomole, someone who was very, very close, and people saw him as his father, you know. And so this is the new. We are thinking, yes, we are thinking nothing will happen to both of them until now. Shwaibu said he has an ambition, but the governor is looking for loyalty. The governor the has, governor should know, you know, has will the governor for loyalty decide? And even Shwaibu says he is even loyal to him. You know, so but I from the things I've been getting from the fillers I've been getting, the governor doesn't want the next successor to come from Edo North. Edo North, and that is where the contention is. And the governor is also saying that you know what, let's concentrate on governance. But you know, in politics, you the next election is in 2024. So if you don't start now to start doing consultation. To start knowing who is behind you before you know it. The train will leave you. Honestly. So that is where somebody who, like Philip Schreiber, who is a core politician, an activist, he, he understands the, the game. He knows the essence of time, Ayo. So he's not looking at, oh, let me just wait until the governor will say, okay, I hereby endorse you. No. Let me start the legwork. So that by the time he gets to that time, I would have been home and dry. I know that, okay, I'll just be doing some little things. So the governor is supposed to understand that. I, I'm also angry because you said something about, about him being petty. I was watching a man of God that was saying something about people should not bring politics into church. This is church for crying out. If you know that somebody is in a church, you should be having a forgiving heart. A deputy governor came to you to come and shake you. And you turn your face away. And you say you want to pray to God. That is where I got angry with the governor. He should have be matured enough to tell the DSS or whoever was there, move away, let me shake him. Whatever you want to do can be outside the church. But inside the church is a sacred place. You should, you should have forgiven the deputy governor from there at that point, whether he wants to pray to God, forgiving him, and then tomorrow you will go and fight him, but not inside the church. And this for the you optics? Know? Yes. You know, Ayo, but I, I, I don't know. I don't know how people see this you church You sat thing. down. You and sat down and you knew that your deputy governor was coming to you, but you ignored him. And you say you want to pray to God and God to answer you. It's not possible. <laughs> now, how long are we going to continue with this? Because governance will definitely suffer in the midst of this. <laughs> and the people that will suffer are the people of Edo State. You don't need to go around Benin City, Edo State, 
this rainy season. Anywhere you go to, you know, you know, no, you, I, you no, you go no. to the Ring Road, you go to Benin City is just like something else this rainy season. So okay. nobody's talking about solving the problem. I just hope the ceiling of that new. Uh, it's, not leaking. it's not leaking. <laughs> you know why? You know why? You know why that thought came to my head? I saw someone mopping the floor. I hope, I hope it's not because uh, water seeped through <laughs> the, the roof and the ceiling. Anyway, I just look at the roads too. The road leading to look at that pond. Yes, yeah, that pool. Yes, yes. You yes. Know, yes. That is a typical um, Benin <laughs> um, site right now. Okay. Anywhere. Uh, any. GRA everywhere. Uh, any. Flooded. The truth of the matter is that conflict between governors and deputy governors. It's not new in Nigeria. However, it is the way it is being managed. Mm -hmm. I mean, for crying out loud, there's nothing wrong in a deputy governor having a political ambition. The governor is not bound to support him, but it shouldn't create unnecessary tension. I remember in um, 2003, um, in Lagos, when President uh, Bola Tinubu was uh, going away, a lot of people, a lot of commissioners showed interest. So with this one, the, the, the deputy governor will not go near. No, no, no. no. <laughs> you can see his, his own office, this new office. So he won't see the governor, he won't meet the governor. Yeah. Uh, his access it. will be restricted. His access will be restricted. That's the truth. So I was saying that a lot of people came out, you know, a lot of people came out to uh, indicating their interest. The governor then didn't discourage anybody, but he had the support for Fashola. What I'm trying to say is that this... Shame, show of shame going on is not necessary. Obaseki government, Obaseki is not even pretending in the public. Exactly. At least pretend <laughs> for diplomatic so reasons. Mean? You, you understand what I'm saying? Like, if, if you say petty, if, 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 there is a, if there is a word that is, that is stronger than petty, we can use it. You understand? I, I even saw the governor's portrait even inside the new office. Yeah, no, no, which, no, yeah, no, 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 there are some people who are, if they are angry, they are angry forever. So they won't even put it. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> and the funny thing is, how, how did things go wrong? You know, Philip Schreiber was, it, it was a kind of, it was a, it was a deputy governor that had the latitude, you know. Yes, yes. The kind yeah. of, he had, he had was latitude. visible. No other deputy governor. Exactly, was exactly, exactly. Was as visible. You mentioned as the as way. I remember when they had their national sports festival yeah. and everything. Philip Tribu was the chairman. He was the person that, you know, regularly. He, he would drag Oshomole down more than his principal. You know, it was like the mouthpiece of the administration against um, uh, uh, Oshomole. But this uh, should have been. Uh, better managed, you know, at least in the eyes of the public. If the governor doesn't trust him enough to succeed, whatever reason, allow him to do whatever he wants to do. He, they will go for primary, and then if he wins five, he does not win, it's also fine. I think we need the kind of constitutional amendment that the, uh, uh, the deputy governor, we, maybe the role should be defined or something like yes, that, that uh, will not be 100% at the mercy of the governor, mm -hmm. because right now, Philip Schreiber is just I, no, the, I, I, think, I think you are correct because in the constitution is like the deputy governor does not know his role. Oh. Like for Philip, the governor can wake up in the morning and sack all no, your eats. Okay, let me, wake let up me in the morning for and this tell you one that, now for get Philip Schreiber out and go to another the role is two the two major things he's doing is revenue generation and sports. So every other thing is not there. So he's, except the governor says okay please well, percent, go yeah. and do um, cut tape in one road. That is when he will go there. It's not that he, and then maybe in some other state, they will say deputy governor will be in charge of works. So we'll say deputy governor, like when education. Lagos, then yeah. will be in charge of education, education. Yeah. you know? So, but I think this constitution has to be amended in such a way that the deputy governors will know, okay, when I want to be a deputy governor, this is mm -hmm. what I will be doing. Maybe in charge of this, 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 that, that. And not that they, Look, the governor will now say, eh, "If I, I think I, my wife will be the one to handle uh, revenue generation. You handle education. No. So the, uh, the lawmakers, as they are listening to us, this should be something they can start thinking of for them to amend the constitution in such a way that all the, the deputy, the role of the deputy governor should be properly defined, so that everybody will know." where his own power starts and where it ends. Because as it stands today, Ayo, a deputy governor will continue to remain a, a rubber stamp. Whatever the governor uh, will continue to remain, just a spare tire, sorry. Mm. Whatever the governor says, go and do. That is what he will do. And that's why we are having all this friction. And that uh, if a deputy governor has ambition, 
his principal will say, why do you have ambition? I'm the one that you are supposed to come and mm, tell, first tell first before you go and say you want to be, uh, you want to succeed me. No, it shouldn't be like that, you know. And the, even the constitution even gives him the right anyway to exactly. contest, mm. you know. So we, we just have to start thinking how we can make sure that we don't have such situation across the, state, uh, the, the country. Because any time that every four years or eight years, you keep having this issue. There's very few governors that you see that they would gladly want to give their deputy governor the role for them to succeed them. And all the time, most of them, but once it gets closer to that election period, mm. you start hearing that a deputy governor has been sacked by the House of, the Assembly. House of Assembly. You know, by the mm. House of Assembly. So every time they want to impeach. And at the end of the day, they will remove. Then later, they will now say, okay, the court has said, okay, Bring, return them. A lot, and then a lot, a lot of things them it has to be The way it is now, if uh, Governor Vasaki wants to go for the jugular now, it's just a matter of him instructing the state. Ex exactly. That's what I'm it's saying. Exactly. That um, court case preempting his move. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just a matter of guys. It's very, very unfortunate that even House of Assemblies have become uh, the appendage. appendage. The mm. So the governor can instruct them at his, at, at his will to do whatever. So where's the independence of that organ of, uh, of, of government? You understand? Uh, this same Obaseki did not inaugurate the other uh, um, ah, uh, yeah. well, for yes, years. For, for, I mean, yes, we, for years. Look, this is not monarchy. This is not a monarchy. This is democracy. So when a governor begins to act as if he's an absolute monarch, you know, it, 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 it uh, leaves much to be desired. I think that the Constitution, just as we are saying, should be amended to checkmate governors like this who want to be larger than life, who want to live like uh, an emperor. Okay? So everybody should wait till you announce your successor mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. That is what you Before mean. you start <laughs> politics. <laughs> that is that exactly. That is what happens when men are bigger than institutions. Hmm. What we are just trying to say is that um, I think is what Edo people really need is governance. And so far, so good. I, I, we, I want to tell you for, for free, Ayo. I'm not sure there's any, anybody in Edo that will say, oh, they are entirely happy with how Edo State is today, compared to how it was before. In terms of zero road infrastructure, infrastructure, everything has decayed. And then the governor who is supposed to sit down and, you know, see to these things, would always want to blame the federal government for everything. You know, with this, all these issues are not some things that he's supposed to concern himself with. If you have a successor, your deputy says, oh, I want to be governor. Mm. I will keep quiet. If, if I were to be him, I will keep quiet. I won't say anything. I will keep quiet. The time will come whereby we'll be able to talk about who is going to succeed me. me. I'll be doing my own work. I won't tell him who I'm going to endorse. You want to go and do consultation? Go and do it. But, and then I'll be sending him the errands that I need to send him. But trying to come out you know, and begin to fight and begin to show all this kind of uh, unnecessary emotion, it doesn't speak well of somebody like, in quotes, somebody like the governor of Asikin. This will believe to, sometimes, because eight years is just, you know, power is transient. <laughs> eight years. Well, I still want to uh, emphasize what, what, what I was saying earlier about men being stronger than institutions. That is why you have a, a governor can instruct in House of Assembly to deal with uh, a deputy governor. That is why you have a governor, you know, uh, uh, you have a, a governor uh, ostensibly instigating councillors, you know, to remove, uh, uh, to suspend the chairman because the chairman challenges him on financial probity or mm -hmm. something like that. You know, that is why you have a minister, and uh, uh, an attorney general who doesn't like the face of um, and maybe uh, EFCC head, and then, you know, begins to practice all sort of, all sort of shenanigans. We must, for us to make any meaningful progress in this country, we must build our institutions in some of the stronger than men because they outlive men in the office. Governors will come and go, but the office of the governor will remain. Amen. Lawmakers will come and go, but the state of assembly will remain. Deputy governors will come and go, but the office will remain. So we must respect those institutions. We must respect, we must give honor to those institutions. So when men become stronger than institutions, and it's just at their mercy of, mercy of their whims and caprices. You're not going to have any progress. Our progress will be stunted. So something should be done about this.